In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to take a blur image in the field that you can then blend with like a tracked or stacked Milky Way image in order to get a little bit better detail in your foregrounds, among many other benefits. Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. If you have been here before, welcome back. If you haven't, welcome as well. I am a landscape photographer based in southern Utah. As you can see, I'm very far from it today. I've traded in my normal red rock for the beautiful Mount Rainier National Park in the forest out here mountain is just absolutely fantastic. It's been a great few days shooting out here and in today's video I wanted to show you guys exactly how I take blower images which I then blend with my tracked Milky Way images or for a lot of you guys you might just be taking stacked Milky Way images whatever it is there's many benefits to blue hour images. So I want to talk about exactly what a blue hour image is first. Now a blue hour image is going to be a, an image taken in the time between sunset and the time when it's totally dark and between the time when it's totally dark or sunrise so basically before sunrise or after sunset and it's when it's still a little bit light out but there's no more golden light from the sunset you've just got this kind of blue light as night uh, comes on to you or as daytime is starting to kind of rise and show itself. So that is what a blue hour image is. Now you may already know, but if you don't, I want to talk about a few of the benefits to taking a blue hour image. So traditionally and normally most landscape photographers shooting night photos will go out and they'll take their photo all in one shot. They'll get their foreground, their Milky Way, everything in one go, which is great. It's the easiest way to edit, but you run into a lot of common issues, even with the great camera technology these days. Now, first and foremost, the problem you run into is really heavy noise, especially in your foreground where it's really dark at night. Your Milky Way is going to have a little bit of noise, but your foreground is going to have even more noise because it's so dark. So a lot of photographers use a software called Starry Landscape Stacker, which is the Mac version, or Sequator, which is for PC. Now, there's tons of videos online about how to use those softwares to reduce noise, but they still don't give you quite the detail that a blue hour image can give you. Now, by shooting in the blue hour when it is still light outside, you buy yourself a lot of benefits. First and foremost, you can shoot that at a much lower ISO. Usually for my blue hour images, I shoot at ISO 800. Uh, I could shoot at ISO 100 and open up my shutter speed a little bit more. I like to do 800 because I don't mind a little bit of noise in there. I like to keep my night images looking a little bit realistic and I don't want to have like a noisy Milky Way and then a totally clean foreground. So I usually will shoot at ISO 400 or 800. I shoot with a Sony a7R 4 It does great at low light at those high ISOs, but depending on what camera you use, you may want to adjust this number uh, either down or up. But when I shoot those images at say ISO 800, I might shoot at f5 5.6 uh, so by shooting at that a uh, little bit more narrow aperture. I've now bought myself a little bit sharper image, a little bit more depth of field than you're gonna get in a regular night photo where you're shooting at f2.8 or f4. Um, and then additionally, I'll shoot at a shutter speed. Uh, I'll adjust the shutter speed depending on how light it is outside, but usually this looks anywhere between like one second um, or even like one tenth of a second to as long as like 20 seconds, depending on what's going on. So I'm gonna be able to capture a much more detailed foreground, which I can then blend with my Milky Way image. If you guys are out there and you are uh, tracking your Milky Ways, you'll have to take a, uh, a foreground image anyways, and so you might as well just do a blue hour when you blend that. So these are just some of the benefits. You're just going to get so much higher quality. I'll show you guys a few of my Milky Way images here where I've used this blue hour blending technique, and you can just see how detailed and rich my foregrounds are. It's really helped me to overcome a limitation of the camera. Now I do want to note one thing before we continue. Of course, using this technique, you could put the Milky Way somewhere where the Milky Way doesn't belong. Now me personally, Personally, I only like to put the Milky Way in places where it actually goes. I like to maintain a really realistic and true looking image. So when I take that blue hour image, I always take note of exactly where the Milky Way is going to be. Usually I'll use an app like Photo Pills, or if I've seen a photo from the spot where I'm at before, I'll know where the Milky Way is. So make sure you know where the Milky Way is if you want to create realistic looking images. If you don't and you just want to put the Milky Way wherever, um, that's totally fine. That's totally up to you. But I would rec uh, recommend that you note that when you post that photo in the caption that this is a composite and the Milky Way doesn't actually appear here. That's just my recommendation, my two cents on that whole thing, because I know there will be a lot of people that will be wondering about that aspect of it. Now, as you can see, I'm out here tonight and I'm out here in the blue hour. So perfect time to make this video. And I want to show you guys how I shoot these blue hour shots because I think there's a lot of mistakes photographers make. So let me show you guys exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it in order to help you guys to hopefully be able to take better blue hour images yourself. 
So first and foremost, it's important that you're taking your photo at the right time of night. Maybe you can see it's starting to kind of get dark out here, um, but the one thing you want to make sure is that there is absolutely no sunlight hitting and that there is not any more golden light anywhere. So in a spot like this where I'm shooting Mount Rainier, as you could see, um, the problem is that this mountain will hold on to that sunlight and that kind of glow long after sunset. So you need to wait for that glow to completely go away. You want the image to be basically as flat as possible because that's going to give you the most realistic look. Now, the the second thing that you really want to make sure of is that you have a very high contrast edge because you will be cutting out that sky. So I'm going to show you guys here this image that I'm going to shoot right now and I'll bring this up on the screen. But this image is great because the edge is very, very high contrast. Now it's still a little bit early yet to be shooting this, but uh, because I'm making this video, I'm trying to get it out while it's still light outside and you can still see me. Um, but ideally you would wait a little bit longer um, because the one thing you're going to run into is on the right side of this image here, you are going to potentially have some haloing which means you will have a really bright edge on this mountain when you go to cut that sky out so the longer you can wait the better but you do want that high contrast edge the reason why this comp is perfect for a blue hour blend is that it's so easy for me to quickly select that sky run along the edge there cut that out and drop my Milky Way in the back uh, and it's it will be so easy now you want to avoid doing things like having trees that go up into the sky uh, having overly complex objects I'm trying to think of another example it's mostly trees to be honest with you um, or just any really really highly complex object now ideally you're going to be shooting uh, your particular scene at either sunrise or sunset depending on which way it's facing unfortunately here where i am tonight i'm shooting the wrong direction which you can see in my blue hour images because i have this bright area of sky on the right side of the frame which is nearby where the sun is setting so it's brighter ideally i'd be shooting these in the morning but for youtube it's really hard to shoot uh, a lot of these videos when it's really dark outside so I, that's why i'm doing it tonight but for you guys out in the field if you're shooting towards the west or southwest or northwest you want to be shooting those blue hour images ideally in the morning whereas if you're shooting east you want to be ideally shooting them at night this is because when the sun is on the setting on the opposite side you're going to get like behind you maybe you can see in the video here behind me uh, the sky is already nice and dark over there and I don't have to worry about any of that being really bright so it'd be much easier to shoot a blur image that way so do keep in mind uh, and while you, I, of course I can still blend it this way it is going to be a little bit more difficult now the other thing to pay attention to is don't worry too much about getting the proper exposure you certainly don't want to overexpose but you can't really underexpose if you want to create a realistic looking night photo you're going to be darkening this blue R image almost guaranteed so you don't need to worry too much I'm fine with my foreground being pretty dark my subject being a little bit lighter but I don't want anything to be overly bright uh, and of course as long as nothing's blown out you can recover anything that's too bright but it does create more work for you when you have to adjust the exposure and all the other things like that. Now one mistake that I'll see a lot of people making is shooting images just like this one here which I will bring up and now the problem with this image is you don't need so much sky you're going to be deleting the sky anyways so I always recommend shooting something more like this. Let me take this and I'll appear this on the screen as well. And the reason why I do it like this is because I'm going to cut the sky out anyways. In Photoshop, it's really easy to expand the size of the canvas. So I can drop a Milky Way on top and then I have more pixels now to work with. So even if I know I'm going to crop the bottom, it just gives me a little bit more to work with. And you never know, depending on my Milky Way image, I might end up making this like a vertical composition. So even though I probably will still crop it similar to how I had it before, it just gives me more options and there's no reason why you want that sky when you know for a fact you're going to get rid of it so shoot it somewhere like this so although i'm not shooting them right now there's a lot of wildflowers out here in mount rainier and a blue hour blend serves a huge benefit when you're shooting something that moves like that if it's windy outside and you're shooting night photos you're not going to be able to do a 30 second exposure and get your flowers or your trees or whatever sharp so by doing that blue hour exposure i can actually take a much quicker shutter speed where i will then be able to have those flowers sharp and i can even do things like a focus stack if that's necessary necessary if you guys don't know how to do focus stack don't worry about it but if you do that's a technique that you can combine with this blue hour blend so i really hope this was helpful for you guys i'll leave a few images here that you guys can look at just to kind of get some inspiration and kind of what your blue hour images should look like and kind of what they ended up in my images if you guys need to know how to blend these blue hour images then with a milky way image uh, i do have another video for that as you can tell this video is just focused on shooting in the field but there's a whole nother youtube video that i made that talks all about blending these images that we're shooting right now with your milky way images which you've stacked or tracked later so i really hope this video is helpful for you guys i know this video is not going to get a ton of reach because this is not a highly searched topic but i do really hope and i really think that it'll be helpful for a few of you guys if you're one of those people that this was helpful 
for you, please leave me a comment. Let me know. It helps so much. And it honestly, uh, it just really makes it so much more rewarding to me if I know that I can help other people and help them get out of a spot that I was certainly stuck in for a long time trying to figure out these blue hour blends and all that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Adios.